Okay, let's try this again. Hi, my name is Shane Yap. I uh, welcome to my channel, first of all. This is basically an introduction and also probably going to be the first video in my series. So today, we are going to be making Gaijin beef, but instead of beef, I'm using a soy-based meat alternative. Um, hopefully, I honestly have no idea if this is going to work out or not. We know that when you're trying to like fry any kind of meat, it needs to have some hold and, you know, ground soy crumbles. They, uh, I don't know how much hold they'll have, so I'll, I'll experiment around a little bit. You probably freeze it before deep frying it. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll take you along this journey, this process, and um, hopefully it's not going to be as boring and drab as I expect it to be. So let's go. I really am going off the beaten path for myself because I have no experience in um, very little experience in making food using meat alternatives and so this one is like a soy based you know meat alternative i found it was on sale that's why i bought it very cheap um so on top of using that i also was very inspired by this other channel called sokyun longest please check her out she's one of my favorites i love her but she made her own rendition of like takeout Beijing beef and um, if you know me, but I'm sure you don't because this is my first video on this channel if you know me, I love Asian American more specifically Chinese American takeout food it's just so bad for you, but it's so good and when I live in Ohio, I live right next right down the street to like a Panda Express and they had like really good food for really affordable prices so it wasn't a great combination but i really enjoyed it and i i saw her and i was like i think that'd be interesting to try and make um this soy based alternative i didn't really think of it until yesterday when i was at the grocery store and it was on sale and i was like i can probably do something with this so i had some of that you can you know replace the soy sauce with um liquid aminos or some kind of uh, gluten-free alternative, but I think you... The point of using soy sauce here, not only is it just for the salt, but you also want that um, umami or that um, fullness of flavor in your mouth. And the cooking wine, you know, just honestly a lot of Chinese dishes use this, and if you want that distinctive Chinese taste, it's usually this uh, Shaoxing cooking wine. Once I have that done, I want to form them into bite-sized pieces onto the purpose of this channel I am a very lazy person however I feel like that has really taken me to the wayside and um, I need to really get back into the groove of, 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 of bettering myself in general and making food that I really enjoy to eat and also food that challenges me a little bit okay so i think i want like this i think this is good this is like um half an inch i think i have no idea how to measure inches but whatever size you feel is comfortable because you know you're gonna end up um frying it and eating it and cooking it so make whatever size you feel like you want to eat it on you made it small you made it bigger but i think that is um good for me cool so what i want to do now is to freeze it and the reason i think the freezing is going to help is once I batter it up, you know, make it easier to batter it. It's not even gonna batter, I'm just gonna put dip it in cornstarch. But it holds its shape so it doesn't, you know, floppy and like breaking apart when I'm gonna put it in the oil. And then the, the intense heat from frying it in the oil is going to cook it all the way through, hopefully. I don't know, this is an experiment. So yeah, put it in the freezer. I think you need a few hours maybe not too long um, it's 12 30 now and so I think by the time it's like 
four or five o'clock it's gonna be ready. So let's go. Um, and so I'm trying to, to set aside some time, maybe once a week, I think that is the goal for me uploading to this channel. For me to explore and to record myself um, documentary style and also I'll you know record the the process of, of me making food and if there are any tips and tricks and any shortcuts that I you know think of in the process because you know I'm lazy um, I will impart the knowledge if I have any so the only types of things that I maybe won't take any shortcuts is if any of the foods that I prepare are respecting the culture and the history and tradition of the dish itself or the ingredient itself. I don't know how much of that I will do, but you know, if it happens, then I'm just letting you know uh, firsthand. So really, this is a documentary for my, myself mostly. I want to give myself the accountability that I want to post this once a week um, to, you know, improve on cooking and making food and preparing food. I think the goal is to maybe go into culinary school, but that um, I don't know if that is a, a, a realistic goal for me. So for now, this is like a good uh, starting point. And I, I really want it to be fun for myself too. And if anyone else who watches this finds any um, benefit to watching this and hearing me talk non-stop about things that aren't that important then you know what that's good too but it's mostly for myself and maybe for like my five friends who are watching So this is what it looks like after two hours in the freezer. I would say they're pretty much frozen. You know, they're good enough. They hold their shape. And I feel like once we coat them, um, they will, you know, do what we want it to do. Now I have some cornstarch and you can use any starch. Potato starch works fine, even better too, I think. But I have cornstarch, so I'm going to use cornstarch. So the goal is to just get, you know, a thin coating around each of the pieces. So yeah, just, just like this. And then you kind of want to shake up the excess because you don't want too much of it. medium high and I have kind of like a walk here but I need to heat my oil up and this isn't really a deep fry but you do need enough oil what is this oil? All right, that's kind of where I want it. Pieces in. I'm gonna do them in batches because 
My pants off, you know. And you find that the oil is getting a little too hot as you can see from how much bubbling is happening. Just turn it down. You know, you control everything in the kitchen, so control the flames, just don't forget about it. That's good. I'll transfer them back to my pan. Fry up the second batch. I think from this alone, I'm learning that I should have uh, made smaller pieces just because they take lesser time to fry. These are more bite sized than these. These are a little, you know, chunky, but I like them chunky. Now, if you have tongs, you use tongs so when you use chopsticks like me. You can save the oil and use it for whatever else in the future. There, just a little bit, just enough. My heat is on medium right now. Looks like that. Also add your garlic. Um, is that enough? Yeah. If you think it's not enough garlic, it's not enough, so just add more. And at this point, if you want to add peppers or anything, you can do the same thing. So get your spatula. You just want to cook this off for a little bit, just a little bit, until the Onions kind of lose their opacity, you get a little translucent. You don't want to burn anything, especially the garlic, because since the garlic is minced so small, it can burn very quickly. I personally like onions a little bit, like really cooked. Um, like taking them all the way until so they're soft and sweet because I don't like uh, the pungency and sharpness of it. I know a lot of people do. I have a friend who eats onions like apples and um, to this day so it really boggles my mind but that is not me. I like to cook mine all the way through so I might just do that for this.
Okay, so my onions are nice and soft. So go get your sauce that you made earlier. Then nice to make some hard olive. So at this point, you really just want to heat it up to the point where it bubbles. Um, for a few reasons. One is just so that it's not cold. Um, you know, when it's hot, you increase the viscosity, basically like how smooth flowing the sauce is. And with that, it makes it easier to coat your uh, fried pieces later once you add them on. But the heat, what it also does is um, helps marry all the flavors of the sauces that you mix initially. You know, it melts the sugar that you added in, um, basically making one, you know, unifying flavor profile. That's what we're looking for here. So not too long, so you can see it's already starting to bubble up right here. And then you can go ahead and add your soy pieces. Now the goal is to coat each and every piece with the sauce. Um, so we'll take a bit of arm work to scoop under, making sure you don't break them up. You put all that effort into freezing and making them look nice and pretty. So you don't want to mess it up right at the end. Yeah, it's good enough. If you had an orange on hand, I would just squeeze a little bit and that would finish off really nicely, but I do not have an orange right now. Uh, so maybe next time. That's good. And that's pretty much it. I am um, actually pretty happy with how this turned out. As you can see, I had rice cooking on the side. I didn't really show the process of that because I have a rice cooker, but it smells great. I think it absorbed the sauce as high I wanted it to be. Now all that's left is a taste test, so. So it looks good. Okay. That's pretty good. I am very proud of myself. Wow. Let's look on the inside. Hopefully it focuses, but it's cooked through. It's a nice coating of sauce. I think frying it really helped. Mm. A few things that I already know I want to change. One, like I mentioned before, I think adding orange juice, orange zest, some kind of citrus on top of the vinegar would help it a lot. Two, I want to make the pieces smaller because I think the true benefit of this isn't like 
you're trying, not, not trying to make a snake or anything, but you know you want more of the fry, you want more of the sauce. So if you have smaller pieces, then you increase like the surface area in total of how much sauce and fry you're getting. Also probably fries faster if it's smaller. Well, I'm gonna finish this because I'm very hungry. But I don't really know what else to say. I'm kinda happy that for my first run of doing this, it turned out pretty well. Um, usually in the cooking process, typically for me. When I'm trying new things, you know, you fail, but then you just have to keep working at it until it works out. So thanks for staying on this journey with me on my food exploration, foodie mentory. I think that's what I want to call it, foodie mentory. Because like foodie, food, documentary, rudimentary, all in one, I think makes a lot of sense. So 